Go ahead and play this clip at the end because Pierce is obviously a guy. We have very good conversations. He had you on. You crushed yeah. it when you were on last week or two I weeks ago. Him. And when he comes on to Ukraine, we'll have our own debates, and he'll always bring that up. And this is a moment as well that we've got into a little bit. Go ahead and play this clip. Giving uh, Putin the land that he's taken <laughs> and say he does that. And say that you're wrong about Putin. Say that it turns out he does have imperialistic ambitions beyond what people think he has. And that emboldened by America's retreat, uh, not just there, but also Afghanistan and so on, he's watched how America's conducted itself on the foreign stage. Let's say he then does attack somewhere like Poland, which is a NATO country. W what then? <laughs> Your face is hilarious. Pierce, you are <laughs> smarter than this. You, you've been around, you've interviewed a lot of people. You know smart. this world better than I do. You've talked to Trump many, many times. You have a relationship with them. It's actually a very entertaining relationship that's mm -hmm. up and down, up and down. And then you go to Charlemagne the God and you defend him in a different way. I love your relationship with him. It's very fascinating, truly. But, Pierce, you know Putin's not going to do shit to <laughs> Poland if Trump's the president. Because when an alpha and an alpha get in a room and they negotiate, there's a, there's a fair level of respect and admiration for each other. We can look at case study. The great thing about what I love the 2024 elections for is the following. Here's why I love the case study of what we have today. I think it's going to be used for decades, if not centuries to come. And here's what the case study is. We can now officially, Pierce, say we had four years of Trump administration okay, to look at, and we have almost four years of Biden to look at. We can compare economy to economy, peace to peace, wars to wars, unemployment to unemployment. We can look at every single thing. And there is zero proof from those who are skeptical on your end, worried about the fact that Putin's going to attack Poland, that Trump would allow something like that to happen because it never happened under his regime during the four years that was there. We feared ISIS. When's the last time you used the word ISIS? Mm -hmm. We feared, this guy went after Hassan Soleimani, who was supposed to be the number two, number three guy in the world in Iran, and potentially was gonna run Iran, and he, had, he was a leader of all these guys behind closed doors, all these proxy wars. You killed that guy? That's kinda like in the mob family, you think about back in the days, you go and you kill Ben Siegel, you mm -hmm. go kill, kill you know, uh, the, the main guys that you don't do something like that. He did. That's what Trump did. Audacity, risk at the highest level. You went after a guy like that? I did. Everyone in the marketplace says, okay, guess what? Uh, you ever seen the movie American Gangster? Yeah. You know, with uh, Denzel Washington? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and you, you remember that scene when he's sitting at the cafeteria mm. and he's sitting with his cousins? Their cousins are just starting to realize that Frank Lucas has become a powerful guy. He sees a guy down the street. He says, he gets up, he walks out, goes to the guy, puts the hat down, he says, where's my 10%? The guy laughs at him. He takes him out. Cousins, everybody sees him. He comes back, sits down, wipes his hands, has the breakfast, and they start having a conversation together. Trump did that to Hassan Soleimani <laughs> on a world stage. <laughs> on the world stage. Love that laugh. Do you know what level of audacity that takes? Who has that kind of audacity? Not a lot of people. He did. Uh, that could have been risky because to some of us, we're like, if Iran retaliates, you have the right to not retaliate. They took out your number one general. Mm. They didn't. Strength is one way to lead, and when America's strong, fortunately, the world is at peace. When America's not strong, like we are today, the world is not at peace. It's true. Bingo. Patrick Ben David, always great to talk to you Bingo. and hear your perspective. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. Likewise. It's the problem we got today. Everybody feels bold to go and do whatever they want to do. So if you got a guy like that in the house, do you think that would be happening today if Trump was president? you think this is what's happening today? Are you crazy? No, you, you, you brought up movies, and I think movies mimic reality so well. And when I think of Iran and I think of Israel right now, I think of that scene in Indiana Jones where the guy in the, the, guy in the black is waving the sword around. He just takes out and the And Indiana gun. Jones just looks at him because he's tired. Indiana Jones has been fighting and running away from bad guys. He's tired. He's yeah. sweaty. He just draws and, he, uh, and shoots him. Yeah. And right. it was very quick. I mean, and that's what I feel like is right now. There's a lot of people that they call it saber rattling for a reason. It's like rattling the saber to remind people that you've got a sword. But then you have, you know, you have people that look at you and say, are you going to use that? You're not going to use that. You're not going to take this out. One part that I thought was super interesting, by the way, awesome. <laughs> that was, <laughs> just you, when you laugh like that, you know, you made a point. But you talked about who's in your ear. You talk about this all the time. Who's in your ear? Something very interesting, and we talked about these articles, you know, there's, it's who's in your ear above you, who's in your ear next to you, and who's also in your ear 
below you. You know, we make assumptions like who's in the Islamic Republic of Iran's ear above them. Well, maybe China. They've invested into Iran how many billions of dollars? Four hundred right? billion over twenty-five years. Insane amount of money. Yeah. Uh, possibly Russia. They're selling them weapons, but. Who's in their ear below them motivating the mullahs of Iran to do something about it? Well, they said in this article here, it's the Houthi rebels basically saying, look, we're doing all this chaos in the sea. Where are you at? Where are you at, mullahs? What are you going to do here? The three Akrats, the Islamics um, uh, 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 running Iran, do something about it. So whether it's the Houthis or the Triple H crew, the Hamas, Hezbollahs, Houthis saying, come on, help us out here. Whether it's the, the pirates at sea, whether it's the Shiite Dude, you're, militias, you're right. They're in their ear. They're, by the way, Iran is the biggest destabilizer of the world. Yes. They're the biggest exporter of terrorism in the world. Yes. Name me somebody more. Now, I know people who don't like America, the first country they're going to throw on the. America. Really? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what Iran's. Do you know what Iran's misery index misery right index. now is? It's 61. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what it was six years ago? Thirty. It's gone from thirty to sixty-one. Do you know it's what actually higher now? By the way. Do you know what their corruption? Seventy-three today. Do you know what Iran's yeah. corruption index is? Hmm. Corruption index out of one hundred eighty countries, hmm. they rank one forty-eight. Oh. You know what the world average score is? World is forty-three. Where are we at? Do you know Middle East average is thirty-four? North Africa's average is thirty-four. You know what Iran's average is? Twenty-four. Robin, the level of corruption chart, in Iran. The people of Iran are fed up, but they're afraid of what 80% of people in Iran. Dude, can you imagine? Like, imagine you are Iranian. Okay. And mm -hmm. your country is in the, this thing called the World Cup. And, and your country is facing off a team. You know who they're playing against? U.S. Mm -hmm. And imagine you as an Iranian don't want Iran to win because you don't want the government to get the victory of beating your uh, number one enemy, which is U.S. And you're living in Iran. Wow. Did you understand what I just said right yeah. there? Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like Michael Jordan's son rooting for his dad to get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> that, that, that's the weirdest thing to see. So that means you are losing your people. Mm -hmm. And some people who are unfortunately, they have a certain level of hate for America. I understand because of what you've been fed. I get it. I was a guy that lived in Iran for 10 years as a kid. I was told America is the most evil empire in the world. I was told that for many, many years. No problem. I'm not sitting here telling you, you know, the, the, we don't have a reputation of what we've done. Well, of course. You can't put At that the aside. same time, you, yeah. you name a country that's positively impacted the world for the better. No one even comes close to this country called America. Not even it's close. Not even close. Here, not even close. Not even Just close. To, to validate everything you're saying, and I want to show this thing real quick. Number one, even the Arab countries in the region know that the biggest destabilizing force and this and the pariah of the world is Iran. That's why when you have this strike that's happening, telegraphed against Israel, against the Iron Dome, you have countries not only the U.S., not only U.K., not only France. You have UAE, you have Saudi, and you have Jordan saying, "Uh-uh, not on our watch." Stepping up to help them because they know that Israel isn't the real enemy. But I'm going to tell you something. Is Islamic Republic. I'm going to tell you something here as well, yep. though. I'm going to tell you something here as well that, again, this is why my, in my brain, guys, I guarantee you, I, I have the biggest, you know, contradictions and arguments always in my brain. Mm -hmm. I also think Netanyahu could have prevented this. Huh. I also think Netanyahu could have prevented this. I also think he um, wants this fight. Unfortunately. And I think, I don't know whether it's legacy driven. I don't know if it's promises he's made to a relative that none of us are aware of that's a mother or a father or a grandfather or somebody that he feels he's loyal to. I also think he wants this because he wants this fight. And I don't like that either. Because as a leader of a, a, your country, your job is to make sure you keep that place safe. And, and, and I'm not sitting here saying, well, you know, they were not the ones that attacked Hamas in the first place and da 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 Totally get it. And by the way, one guy next to me saying, you really think they're not giving up the hostages because they're not willing to give up the hostages? Or do you think they're not giving up the hostages because the hostages are all dead? Why do you think they're not giving up the hostages, right? Because here's what we are going to realize. I'm telling you, January 21st, January 20th, inauguration. 2025. 2025. Trump gets elected. If Hamas doesn't release the prisoners, they're not alive. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I got you. If oh. you don't release them, they were not yeah. alive the entire time yeah. anyways. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm also not one that sits here and is like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, Netanyahu, this. I'm, I, don't, 
I don't trust a lot of his sequencing and his decision making process that he made. Well, I, and I and the people that. and the people don't like him. They're yeah. protesting I'm him. I'm just in the not a fan every of day. the way. I'll he's tell you this. But by the way, you're not wrong. Yeah. There's a lot of people that <clears> in, within. Listen, this is the beauty of a democracy. You're gonna have a lot of disagreements. I mean, how many people agree with Trump? Disagree with Biden? Here that like that's the way it works. In Israel, it's they have the Knesset, they have the Parliament. That's what's going on there. If you can, if you can scroll out on this, there's the three leaders of Israel right now. You have Benjamin Netanyahu, you have the Defense Minister, yeah. um, you have Galant, and you also have uh, the um, military chief Benny Gantz, who's who's net. Th this is the equivalent, literally, of. Donald Trump sitting on the left and Joe Biden sitting on the right and some moderate saying, let's figure this out. That's what this picture represents. Mm. Do you think those guys all agree? Who's the guy in the middle, by the way? That's um, he's the um, defense minister. Is he, is he a powerful guy? That's you have Galant, defense minister. That'd be like. Uh, I know. But is he like a Mattis? Is he that level of he's a, guy? a Mattis? Correct. Okay. All right, yeah. That's it. that picture. All right. So if you think those three guys disagree, by the way, look at the title of the article. The war the leaders war. don't trust one another. Well, that's so, not good. But by the way, imagine if you, I would love, love if we were at war to see a picture of Joe Biden or Obama, Trump sitting at the same table saying, guys, let's figure this shit out. They at least are at least somewhat unified. So do I agree with yeah. you that maybe Netanyahu has different intentions than other people? Yes, that's what they have. I have too many elections. questions. Man. Yeah, I, yes. I just have way too many questions for myself. And, and, uh. I just have way too many questions for myself. But for me, when I'm when I'm seeing what's going on today, you know, what is prevalent, no matter what the times are, a strong leader lowers temperatures. Hundred percent. You got that uncle in the house when acts kids are acting up, and he raises his voice one time, everything goes down. If that guy's missing, yep. everybody's fighting. You need this is this is why. Oh my God, man! Like you look at any freaking great organization. Any great organization that's striving and growing behind closed doors, there is a shot caller that's respected, feared, loved, admired, a little bit of everything. This is why you have to value great leadership so much. Unfortunately, the problem with the majority of people, these journalists, when it comes down to strong leaders, most journalists don't relate to what it is to be a strong leader. Because journalists are talking about that. Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? That's so. So, but strong leadership to be in there making the decisions that is not an easy job. It's very complicated. And, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, and we're feeling it today. Yeah, we're feeling it today. Can we're seeing it. By today. the way, love the interview with Pierce Morgan. Last yeah. point we talk about follow the money here. You know, we have this border bill potentially $100 billion, $93 billion, what they're it's talking called, about. It's called right now. You know, and it's three countries on the border Ukraine, Israel. Taiwan, and then the, the American border. I love what you said about the border. love the analogy you gave. You're making $27,000 a year. You're $34,000 in debt. If you just follow the money, we've given as much money to Ukraine this year, since the, since the start of the Ukraine war, almost since, since the history of Israel. Since the history of Israel, since 1948, we've given approximately $130 billion total. So now they're talking about a $3 billion package or a $14 billion package. How much money, j j legit question, how much money have we and the world given to Ukraine? I'm guessing at least $100 billion. More than $100 billion. Okay. And that scumbag keeps coming saying, give Greatest me money, I pay back. Time. I pay how back, much? give me money back. There's $75 billion just oh, by the U.S. The European has committed approximately $93 billion. Pat, you're a math guy. What's that? Committed, bro, but yes. that's 168 That's committed. Okay. That's not that. That's so, committed. So I, I yeah. love I love uh, when Pierce tried to catch you with like, but you say intervention. How much are you going to give to Ukraine? How much are you going to give to Israel? And you're like, look, you know, that's like giving someone a million dollars and someone giving a thousand dollars. Big difference. Yeah. I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party. Tulsi Gabbard says she is no longer a Democrat. A potential Tulsi Gabbard VP. Where we are being told that we just have to comply and go along with whatever they say. American people uh, are smarter than this. However, we must remain vigilant to recognize their propaganda for what it is, pure lie. Unfortunately, we live in a time where free speech is under attack. Whatever they say goes, and we, we have to just fall. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, you owe them an apology. <laughs> Taking on Kamala Harris on a debate stage before, I would look forward to doing that again. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.